You're going to start without me? <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning. Uh, General Toluto, can you hear me? This is Brian Whitman at the Pentagon. Yeah, I can hear you very well, Brian. Well, uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, as everybody here uh, knows from the announcement, that our brief for today is Major General Joseph uh, Toluto, who is the commander of the multinational North Central, multinational division North Central, and uh, commander of Task Force Liberty. He's also the division commander of the 42nd Infantry Division. Uh, General Toluto and his troops are responsible for the ongoing security operations in the areas that include uh, Balad, uh, Kirkuk, Tikrit, uh, and Samara. Uh, he's going to give us a brief opera operational update uh, in uh, his area and then uh, be prepared to take some questions from you. As usual, uh, you can see him. He can't see us. So when we get to the questions, uh, if you could just identify yourself, that would be helpful to him because he knows some of you, I think. And with that, General, we'll let you get started. Okay, thank you, Brian. And uh, a very good day to all of you there in Washington. Uh, as Commander of Multinational Division North Central Iraq, I'm pleased to be here today with you and uh, speak to the American people. Before I take some questions, I, I want to take about five minutes and give you a brief overview of North Central Iraq. Our area includes four very diverse provinces north of Baghdad with more than six million Iraqi citizens. Task Force Liberty represents nearly 23,000 soldiers who partner with our Iraqi counterparts across Kirkuk, Asulamania, Diyala, and Salah Adin provinces. Combined, our area is roughly the size of West Virginia. Our mission here in north central Iraq remains the building of independent, and self-sustaining Iraqi security forces as we maintain pressure on the insurgency. Our work is protecting the process that will allow Iraqis to develop their new government and build their own sustainable security forces. Like the rest of the country, 2005 is a year of transition in North Central Iraq. Since the January 30th elections, political debate is as important if not more important than military operations. Real dialogue has been established across North Central Iraq. And while few have taken notice, Iraqi regional and local elections have been held successfully over the past weeks and months. Last month saw the local elections in cities, governments across Saladin province, a largely Sunni region. In Diyala province, the transition of the governor's office in April marked one of the first peaceful transfers of power in Iraq in decades. In Kirkuk, the provincial council is seated and moving forward as the diverse groups learn to collaborate and compromise. A large measure of our success is the transfer of responsibility to Iraqi security forces. In recent months, I have seen the contribution of our Iraqi army partners rise dramatically. Iraqi units now conduct over half of the counterinsurgency fight. They do this either independently or jointly with our soldiers. With the Iraqi Ministry of Defense establishing a clear Iraqi chain of command, our soldiers are partnering to help develop the leadership from battalion to division level. North Central Iraq has two Iraqi Army Division headquarters, with five Army brigades all together, our partnership includes some 50,000 Iraqi police or border enforcement officers and Army soldiers. In the past few months, all of these units have made progress toward independent operations. The Iraqi's 5th Division's 2nd Brigade conducted operations in mid-June with the Iraqi police near Baritz. There are 17, there, this is their seventh such operation. They successfully provided brigade level command and control for Iraqi army units from multiple battalions. This is an example of what we're seeing. The Iraqi brigade leadership and staff responded swiftly to information reported by local Iraqis, lending to the detention of more than two dozen suspects and seizing a sizable arms cache. Our estimate is that the Iraqi soldiers and police captured enough munitions that would manufacture 160 IEDs. 
As Iraqi forces such as this grow more capable and independent, they gain greater control of north central Iraq. We see progress every day by witnessing the cooperation between Iraqi citizens and their security forces. We see this in the effectiveness of the city and provincial joint coordination centers, translated in Arabic as Mim Tamims, or places of help. In the month of June, we saw more than 4,000 Iraqi citizens calling their coordination centers with information, a sign of Iraqi confidence in their police and army forces and the cooperation of the Iraqi people to ensure their security. We see this progress in the aggressive attitude of brave Iraqi police officers and soldiers who train and fight to neutralize the insurgency. Our assessment is that the Iraqi security forces are greatly improved and are striving to get better every day. While much progress has been made in all lines of operation, more remains to be done. There are a number of Iraqis and foreigners committed to preventing a new permanent Iraqi government in north central Iraq. The majority of the insurgency in north central Iraq remains those Iraqis with ties to the former regime or Sunni Arabs who reject their new sovereign government. Since our mission began in north central Iraq, we are seeing more of these Iraqis turning away from violence and participating in the political process. They know they can achieve much more as part of the process, not part of the problem. A smaller element of the insurgency in north central Iraq is religious extremists and foreign terrorists. Their attacks show no regard for innocent lives and their spectacular attacks have gained them little more than headlines in the past weeks. While killing hundreds of Iraqi civilians and a similar number of Iraqi police or soldiers, they have failed to disrupt the progress in north central Iraq. The Iraqi government continues to move forward, police and army forces continue to grow stronger, and the Iraqi people refuse to bow before such intimidation. I can assure you, their methods and goals are rejected by most Iraqis, and we remain committed and focused to helping our Iraqi partners neutralize them. Progress in security means progress towards prosperity for the Iraqi people. Across north central Iraq, more than 950 businesses are registered with a local chamber of commerce, while business centers like the one in Kirkuk continue to seek new opportunities for economic growth. This summer also marks the completion of numerous reconstruction projects. With approximately $2 billion in total reconstruction process projects across our area, 900 projects are complete, 550 more are underway, and 450 more ready to start. From local schools to large-scale power plants, reconstruction is well underway in north central Iraq. In summary, Iraqis control and run their local and provincial governments in north central Iraq. Certainly, we still provide security assistance where required, and that is to be expected. However, businesses are operating Schools are open, children are receiving an education, and Iraqi security forces are providing internal security and are respected more every day. We know that our mission to defend their freedoms here is a vital part of defending our own freedoms. With that, I'll be happy to take some of your questions. Well, thank you, General, for that overview, and uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, Will here. Uh, General Will Dunham with Reuters, uh, could you characterize the strength of the insurgency in your region uh, relative to the past, and uh, what changes have you seen in it since uh, roughly the beginning of May when there was an upsurge in insurgent violence around the country? Um, okay, the I would say that the insurgency in north central Iraq is at about a similar level uh, to pre-election, but it has changed in, in its complexion. Uh, our assessment is that many of the former regime or Sunni Arabs that were opposed to uh, the new government and the new political process have fallen away. I think that has reduced. I think the uh, religious extremists, uh, while they have not, in, in our view, in north central Iraq grown they have coalesced a little bit more uh, with national religious extremists like Ansar al-Sunnah 
you know, getting involved with QJBR activities, and they are responsible for the spike in suicide bomb attacks in north central Iraq. Our attacks in direct fire and in indirect fire have been re uh, have reduced over time, and, and going back to last year to this year, that those types and forms of attack have been reduced uh, significantly, um, and that. Those are the attacks that some of the uh, Iraqis, uh, Sunni Arab rejectionists or foreign regime elements were conducting. The, uh, the suicide bomb, of course, uh, is, is the uh, weapon of choice now uh, for all the purposes that you, you know. Okay, Bob? Uh, General, this is Bob Burns with Associated Press. Uh, you mentioned in your opening remarks the importance of transferring responsibility to Iraqi security forces, and you said there's been progress in that area. As you look ahead, could you say how soon you think the Iraqi security forces will be able to operate uh, in full control without U.S. support in one or more of the four provinces in your area? Well. We have uh, made good progress in that area. Uh, I would be reluctant to put a timetable on it, all I can, uh, because I think from an operational standpoint, uh, we stand pretty close to the vest with, with how ready a force is to, to assume control. Let me just say this, we have made steady progress uh, toward that end state. Uh, moving, moving in that direction, at a very acceptable rate, in my opinion, and uh, uh, it is satisfying uh, the people I work for uh, where we're going with this. I, I think that many of those, as I said in my opening remarks, Iraqi security forces are already conducting over half of the operations that we do. They're either involved with us or they're doing things with minimal uh, coalition support. Th and that's a huge, that's a, that's a huge accomplishment. What we, what we need to really continue to make this go in a, in a good direction where they can be independent is we need the sustainability of the capabilities that they have. They're doing very well with personnel. They're able to sustain that. But we got to work through some of those other things that, that, um, that will, will hurt your readiness, those things like the maintenance and equipping issues and, and other things that you need to be able to sustain over time to uh, be able to say that you can stand up. So we have to continually um, evaluate, you know, how that sustainment process is going. Let's go to Pamela. General, this is Pam Hess with UPI. I'm uh, actually coming out there in a couple of weeks, and I'll look forward to talking to you um, in person a little bit more about this. Would you give us um, some more detail on Ansar al Sunna? And, and that uh, coali the, the coalition you see building between um, them and Zarqawi. And would you also talk about whether um, Iraqis calling in with tips are able to give information on those kinds of organizations, or are they more focused on the former regime element, Sunni rejectionists? Okay. Um, as you know, Ansar al Sunna has been around for some time. It, they're, it's, they're not new. Uh, to the area, and they're, I think, trying to assert themselves, uh, you know, to become more more visible and to have a have a greater impact uh, on what's going on. I, our personally, uh, we feel that you know, they can't really get the kind of traction they need, so they're kind of riding in on the uh, QJBR IO, if you will, information. Uh, type train uh, to you know give themselves more visibility. So I think there's there's a, you know we don't know to what level this coalescence is frankly uh, uh, how how um, how much they're really cooperating with each other. I wouldn't think it is a it's a great you know uh, well designed organization. I think there's contact and I think there's probably uh, sharing of information and possibly sharing of resources, so that's on the that's on that side of the house. Um, the second part of your question was on the calls, and I'm glad you asked that question. We think that's very significant. 
as a as a, the May and June time frame, as the insurgency will do, it will spike from time to time, and, and it and it's always in is spiking in concert with some event that's going on here in Iraq, because they need to try to, you know, negate or, you know, delegitimize what what's happening. Uh, during that period of time, we saw the phone calls go up a great deal. Uh, you know, a gr uh, 150 percent increase in phone calls uh, into these JCCs, and they and they take on all forms of information, and they're not just phone calls. I might add that we have walk-up uh, tips where people come right up to uh, not just their own security forces; they come up to coalition forces. They do not normally. Uh, th they they point out things that they see wrongs, and it's hard to judge. They're not in tune with religious extremists or Sunni Arab projectionists. They see things that they don't like. For example, they they point out caches. Almost eight out of the ten caches we find now are pointed out to us by Iraqis. Um, they they'll point out and have pointed out cars that look suspicious to them. They'll report cars that are parked, uh, you know, on the side of uh, the road or in, a, or in a city that they don't like. You know, that car is, uh, can be affiliated with a, a religious extremist group that's put it out there. Uh, so so they, they just report what they see. And, and we're very heartened by that because, frankly, um, that is becoming more prevalent and the Iraqi security forces are taking care of more things from end to end. And I can give you an example of that very quickly. There was a, um, a, a vehicle-borne IED that was parked in a, in a, in a, in Kirkuk in a very busy market area. Uh, citizens saw the car parked. Uh, they thought it was strange. They reported it to the local police that are, that are there in Kirkuk on the street. The police re reacted to that, cordoned off the area, uh, brought in their own EOD team, had the car inspected, and sure enough, there was uh, it, it was rigged for explosion. Uh, they they defused it, they uh, they uh, got rid of the uh, the vehicle borne IED, and they reported it out to their media. There was a one coalition soldier involved in that event, and all we did was monitor it, and and that is happening more frequently. Just a, a follow-up. What is this acronym QJBR? I knew you would, somebody was going to ask me that question. I thought you were all used to that acronym. It, it, I don't know what the Arabic uh, meaning is, but it stands for the land between the, uh, the, land between the rivers, um, Al-Qaeda, uh, some, you know, uh, Jihad and land between the rivers. That's what it stands for. That happened in Kirkuk, the car bomb? Uh, the vehicle-borne incident I just described to you was in Kirkuk. What? When was it? What month? Um, it just happened here in, in um, actually, it was on the 10th of July. I got it down here in front of me. Let's go over here to Brian. Hi, General. Brian Hartman with ABC News. I, I, I just wanted to go back to something you said earlier because uh, I might be just a little slow here, but um, you, you said that the, uh, you're about similar, the insurgency is about similar to where it was pre-election. Foreign regime, uh, uh, the former regime elements and the Sunnis have fallen away, but the religious extremists have not grown. H how can things be staying the same when half the insurgency has sort of dropped off and the other half has stayed the same? Can, can you give me a little better uh, picture of what you think the contours and size of the insurgency is right now? I didn't think, I, I don't think I said uh, that the, I thought the religious extremists had grown. I thought they had coalesced, meaning that there was more cooperation or passing of information between a variety of groups. So I, I want to clarify that. Um, I think, you know, I'm quantifying that in the, for, frankly, uh, in the context of levels of attacks. While direct fire and indirect fire have been reduced in North Central, uh, we're seeing more suicide vehicle-borne IEDs of late. So there's, there's some trade-off there. Uh, of course, 
the vehicle, suicide vehicle borne IEDs are mostly against innocent civilians, um, against soft targets, Iraqi security forces, uh, police and, and army soldiers uh, in static positions. And so, so therefore, they're still trying to disrupt the process. They're still trying to intimidate people. They're trying to intimidate uh, Iraqi security forces. These are the things that have been going on in north central Iraq for some time now. Of course, they failed to intimidate the people during the election time frame, and uh, they're not doing it now. Uh, so it's, in that aspect, I just think that we maintain pressure on the insurgency. I don't think it has grown. Uh, I don't know that I could say that it has uh, been reduced significantly because we still see these level of suicide attacks, but it doesn't mean it's done by a lot of people. Talk Bye. General, this is Vicki O'Hara with National Public Radio. Um, I wonder if you could give us a general breakdown of the um, ethnic makeup of the Iraqi security forces in your area. And my follow-up question to that is, do you have enough Sunnis among the Iraqi security forces to be trusted to handle security in Sunni areas, in other words, avoiding a bloodbath by turning things over to Shia? Right. Uh, we are the mix of our army forces are kind of mirror the community that they work in. Uh, the, the majority of the Iraqi army forces in north central Iraq were formerly the ING. Those units were raised from areas, uh, community areas, like you would have a National Guard. Uh, and that, a lot of that has, has maintained itself. There are units that, there, we, we, but we have mixed throughout the force, even in, if you're in a Sunni area, we will have uh, some Shia soldiers in there because there's Shia that live in the area. Uh, and they wanted to join the army and, and they certainly can join the army. So we have a good mix of forces, but as you would expect if you're in Saladin province, which is 80% Sunni, uh, most of the soldiers are Sunni Arabs. But there are Shia in there and, and there would be some Kurdish. If you go over to the Kirkuk province, you're probably gonna see more Kurdish soldiers and uh, you'll see Sunni Arab soldiers because the western part of Kirkuk province is Sunni Arab. And so they kind of mirror their, the demographics of the area that they work in. Jim? Sir, Jim Garamon with uh, AFPS. There are two Iraqi divisions in your area. Uh, are the commanders actually exercising command and control of their units and how do they uh, uh, fit in with your uh, unit and uh, the chain of command uh, that way? Okay, good question. The, uh, right now, the Iraqi division headquarters is not conducting operational control of, of the subordinate units, the brigades and the battalions. They have administrative control. So they, they, are, they are learning, first of all, they are putting their organizations together, very complex to be able to, to uh, manage a division uh, they're, they're, they're developing their staffs, they're developing the process of how to work the staff, and they're doing so with administrative activities. And as a division commander, I can tell you that uh, what division headquarters do is that they provide resources and manage the force, uh, and that's a great deal of their work. So they, they manage personnel, they manage their pay, uh, they, they manage their logistical uh, status, and they're doing a lot of that right now. They're not yet directing operational, um, you know, missions, uh, and that's all part of the process. And that's going to take them, uh, you know, somewhat longer. They're they're not going to be in a position to to do that uh, for a while. But uh, you know, some are making faster progress than others uh, of the two that we have. So. It, it again, it's conditions based. It's, it's how well the brigades are doing, how well the battalions are doing, what the threat level is, how the governance is in the area. A lot of these things have to be put together before one could decide that, yes, in fact, this, this division commander can, can run this particular battle space. 
Did that answer your question, sir? Yes, it did. Thank you. Let's go over here. General, this is Scott Foster with NBC News. The, the foreign fighters in your area, where are they coming from, and uh, what are you doing to stop them? The, the foreign fighters, the, the only thing that I could tell you about, you know, where they're coming from, uh, we have arrested or detained around 33 foreign fighters in the time we've been here. That's, that's not a huge amount. Um, they have been of many different uh, uh, ethnicities or, you know, we have Egyptians, Sudanese, uh, Syrian, uh, Saudi, uh, to lesser extent. The Egyptians and the Sudanese seem to have, we have, have detained more of those than we have uh, the others. Uh, where they're coming from, you know, those are, those are the countries that that they're from, uh, you know, where they're living and, and how they're getting in here is all a matter of, um, you know, in, information, intelligence information. So, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's my best answer on that. Let's go back to Pam. Could you put some numbers? Um, it's Pam Hess again. Would you put numbers on the suicide bombers? Uh, we were recently briefed in Baghdad. The numbers are actually going down. Um, but we don't have any baseline for your area, so could you tell us where they were and, and where they've gone to now? Uh, we have experienced about, on average, prior to the election, uh, around five to eight a month. We had uh, um, as the election came closer, and I was here, although not in command, there was a there was a spike up, uh, you know, that reached above above those numbers, up you know, 11, 12. Uh, we had in in May and June we had a spike uh, in in suicide vehicle uh, bombers um, up in the 15 range. Now, our assessment of that is that we had. A bunch of things going on in in the theater. There were very uh, aggressive operations going on in Mosul. Uh, there were aggressive operations going out in West in Al Qaim with the Marines. There were very aggressive operations going on in in Baghdad with um, a squeeze play. And as as is the case, and I, I know General Casey said this, and I've heard many people say it, and it, it is true. Uh, you can squeeze them. And, and they will move around, and it's not meaning that because we had a spike up in suicide vehicle uh, born IEDs, and one would not want to jump to the conclusion that that means that we've had a significant new in, in growth of foreign fighters. So for the record, it is the 15th of July, and the last I knew we only had two vehicle, uh, suicide vehicle born IEDs in July. Um, again, uh, that's our assessment of why they spiked up, but that's about the level of suicide vehicle-borne IDs that we've we've witnessed. Well, uh, General Will Dunham with Reuters, uh, mindful of uh, the recent incident in which numerous children were wounded, uh, is the U.S. military taking any steps uh, intended to reduce the chances of child casualties? Are you referring to the incident in, in Baghdad here where they, they ran into the Humvee where the children were around? Yes. Um, well, we have not received any special orders uh, at all, but, but clearly, you know, the insurgents, the suicide bomber, the murderer, is, is the one that chooses the place and the time to do these things. Uh, it, is, it is difficult when you're going about your work day in and day out. Uh, you can be, you, you're vigilant, and I assure you that the soldiers are constantly vigilant uh, on what their posture is and, and so on and so forth, especially in this environment. Um, but you're in, you're in a large area, I, I, as I expressed, uh, you know, we're in an area the size of West Virginia. You get 
eight vehicle born or suicide vehicle born IEDs in a month. Um, the percentages of this happening in one particular place or another, uh, what is that percentage? So I mean, these, these things will happen to you because they pick the place and the time, they pick the vulnerable target, and they're the ones that are killing the innocent you know, people. How, how do you stay away from it? We've had suicide bombers uh, you know, step up to uh, uh, do a uh, suicide bombing in front of a bank where people were going in to cash their paychecks. Uh, knowing that they were going to be there and, and just walk into that crowd and kill a bunch of innocent civilians who had their children with them. General, I see we've uh, reached the end of our time, unfortunately. We really do appreciate you taking the time, though, to, uh, to spend it with us and uh, to give us a better understanding of what's going on in your area. And uh, we wish you the best and hope that you will come back via the modern means of technology to us real soon. I, I appreciate it and thank you for what you do.